Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our playlist today on 2023's external exams in Queensland for general mathematics. In this video, we are looking at some questions from the short response part of paper one on networks. Now, before we go there, I just want to tell you about a few ways that you can engage further with me here at the channel. Firstly, you could like and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you'll always know when the next video is available. Why not consider super liking as well? It costs time, money and resources to put these videos together. Um, you might want to give back a dollar or two for the time it saved you and the help that it's given you. You could also tell someone, why not share um, your thoughts in the comments? Why not consider putting this on your class OneNote or even forwarding the video link to somebody that you care about, like a family member who might be studying for their exams. You could also consider following us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Right, let's get straight into that first question. Question 20, it's worth four marks. Graphs one and two are shown, so here we are, one and two. Show that Euler's formula applies to graph one, and this is worth two marks. So we're not interested in graph two just yet, we're gonna focus on this one here. Well, firstly, we can pull Euler's formula straight off our formula sheet. And it's got these letters, V, F, and E. You would recall that V stands for vertices, they're our little points. Um, or the corners. F stands for faces, so that's the enclosed shapes in a network, and E stands for edges, that's our lines. So we need to count up each of those and prove that it all comes to two. So firstly, our vertices are four, one, two, three, and four. Our faces are three. Now there's two enclosed spaces, but remember the tricky thing about this is that you've always got this area around the network is also classified as a face. So that gives us three faces. And then edges, we've got one, two, three, four, five, five edges. Let's substitute that into Euler's formula now. Now we get a mark here because we've correctly identified those. That might also be inferred by our substitution as well. So we've got four vertices plus three faces take away five. So four plus three makes seven. Take away five, that equals two. And that proves the formula is correct. So hence, we're showing that, we need to give a statement at the end, Euler's formula applies to graph one. We get our second mark here for applying the formula. So easy peasy. Part B, what feature in the drawing should be changed to represent a graph two as planar? So in particular, you need to remember what planar means. Planar means that the graph can be redrawn so that no lines cross over. At the moment, we've got this crisscross here that's causing us a bit of a problem. To do this, we need to identify the crossover and say what feature needs to be changed. The feature that needs to be changed is that one part of this crossover needs to be redrawn. So you actually need to, to state that to get your mark. So recognizing that this is the problem that makes it not planar at the moment, that's what needs to be redrawn. Part C now asks us to actually do it. So if you just jump straight into doing it, you wouldn't get that previous mark. Um, you need to just remember these cognitive verbs. What feature? It's asking you specifically what has to be changed, not to change it there. Now we change it. So we know that the crossover is a problem. So either one of these lines needs to be drawn around, either that one there or that one there. So it could be done one of two ways. So firstly, we could pull this line that was in the middle, bring it around the outside, or that other line that was there and bring it around the right side. You didn't have to show both ways. You just had to do it one way. Either of those um, would have been correct. Um, showing graph two as a simple connected graph with seven edges that do not cross. That's the key part there. And the five vertices stay in exactly the same positions. And then you would have got your next mark. Okay, our next one here is question 21 worth four marks. The road network shows the number of vehicles per hour traveling from the airport to the city center or the town center. So we need to determine the capacity of cut C. Now remember, when we're working out the capacity of a cut, we've got to add together all of the lines that this cut passes through, and there's four of them. However, we're only going to count capacities that go from the source, which is the airport, to the sink, which is the town centre. So only if the flow is in that direction. We can see this one's in that direction, but that one is not. So we won't count from the college to the bridge. From the bridge to the town centre is going from source to sink. And from the bridge to the showground, it's going from source to sink. So we've got three that we're actually going to add together. That's those three there. So if we add those three together, we get 440 vehicles per hour. 
and we've correctly determined the capacity of cut X, we get our first out of four marks. Let's jump on to part B. Determine the maximum flow from the airport to the town center. So what is the most that can actually go through the network? Now there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. Um, we're gonna use maximum flow minimum cut. You remember that the maximum flow through any ne network is going to be the same as the lowest cut that you can put through the network. So we're gonna to have to add more than just cut X. We're gonna to have to add a bunch of cuts through the network and work out which is the smallest. So I could cut it here. I'm gonna call that one cut Y. And I'm gonna add the 200 to the 150 and get 350. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut down here. These are my obvious cuts. So I've got 120 plus 100 plus 80. I'm gonna call that cut Z and I get a capacity of 300. So already I've found a cut smaller than cut Y. So now I just need to keep cutting to see if I can find something smaller again. Okay, so this one here is gonna be 120 plus 100 plus 140, which will be 360. That's, I'm gonna call that cut A. It's already bigger than the ones I found, so not relevant. And I can find one more cut through here, cut B. And it's gonna be 200. I'm not gonna count the 50 because it goes backwards. The 100 and the 80 makes 380. So already I've found um, four more cuts and only one of those looks like it's a nice low cut. So we've identified all the cuts with an appropriate member uh, method and cut Z is actually the minimum cut. Therefore the maximum th flow through the whole network is going to be 300, but I need to use my units, vehicles per hour. That's my maximum flow through the network. So I can't, get it, I can't push 360 cars or 380 cars through because the most the network can take is what is made up of these roads at the very end. Okay, during a weather emergency, all roads to and from the bridge are gonna be closed to vehicles um, because obviously there's been a problem with the bridge of some sort. So determine the maximum flow from the airport to the town center during this time where the bridge is out. So firstly, that's going to affect all of these roads here. So we're not gonna be able to use any of those because if the bridge is out, we can't get on or off the bridge, which means that the only way to get from the airport to the town center is via the college. We can only go across here. Now, we're gonna be limited in this section here. We might be able to get 200 cars through here, but we're gonna have a bottleneck at this point here we can't get more than 120 cars through that road. So this road here is gonna limit this new network. Um, it's gonna be the one with the lowest flow, so therefore, we're only gonna be able to get a maximum flow of 120 vehicles per hour once this bridge goes out in the weather emergency. And correctly identifying that gives us our next mark. All right, we're on to question 23, another network graph that's been drawn and we need to state the, vert, um, the degree of vertex E. So here's vertex E here. So the degree is how many paths come out of it? One, two, three, and four. You can see all those little paths there. So the degree is four, we get our first mark out of five marks. Part B, state the number of edges joining D and E. So here's D over here, here's E. We've got two edges that are joining. So two edges is the answer and we've got that one correct. So if you know your stuff about networks, this was actually a pretty easy question. Part C, construct an adjacency matrix from the graph with the vertices in alphabetical order. So to set that up, we're gonna have A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, along the horizontal and the vertical. We've already achieved what they've told us here, they're in alphabetical order, that makes sense. So now what we need to do is work out for each part of this um, adjacency matrix, what numbers to put in here. Now, for, num for A, that'll be the trickiest one because I've got a loop here. Now, remember with a loop, um, to get from A to A, I've only got one way to get there, okay? Um, for B, A to B, there's only one way to get there as well. Um, and correctly entering the number one got me my first mark, so recognizing that. Now, I've got A to B is one. A to C, can't get there, that'll be a zero. A to D, can't get there in one step, also a zero. A to E, only one way to go there. So we've got our first row in there and we're actually gonna get another mark there for doing one row or one column correctly. So that was kind of nice of them. Okay, so from B. Now, um, from B to A, we've already got from B to A here. We can just duplicate that there again. From B to B, 
I can't go any way from B to B. There's no loop, so that'll be a zero. Um, from B to C, no one can get to C. That'll be a zero. And from B to D, once again, a zero. And B to E, there's only one road there. Okay, next row's done. C to A. So I can just take that zero and pop it over here. Um, from C to B. Well, I've already got a C to B here. That'll be a zero again. C to C. Nope, C can't go to anywhere. In fact, we can already fill the rest of this row in with zeros because C is stuck in the middle. It's not connected to the network. So there's no way of getting to C on these particular pathways. All right, let's jump down D to A. We've already got that there. It's a zero. Um, from D to B, we've got that in there. That's a zero as well. From D to C, zero. D to D, no way to get anywhere there, zero. D to E, we've actually got two pathways there. So I'll pop a two in there. And the rest of this final row is somewhere in here. So we can actually just pull the right things off here. A to E is already recognized there as a one. B to E is already recognized here as a one. Um, C will be a zero because we've already said C can't go anywhere. Um, from D to E, um, we've already got that here, it's a two. And then from E to E, there's no loops here, so that makes that a zero as well. And then we got our tick for completing an adjacency matrix. And that's all of the network questions that were in that paper. So don't forget to engage with us with those ways we mentioned at the beginning of the video if you found this helpful. It's just your little way of saying thanks to us. And we really want to say thanks to you as well for watching. And if you've got any questions at all, please contact me at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have an amazing day.